The National Hurricane Center has officially highlighted this tropical wave. By the end of this video, you're going to know the three things to watch out for to predict where this thing is going to go. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegg is back with you. There's also a brand new highlight from the Hurricane Center that just came out. We're going to talk about that. We'll break down the weekend severe weather threat across the country later on in the well on the video. I would love to know your thoughts. Post in the comments what you think is going to happen as this wave gets into the Caribbean. There it is. It looks healthy. It's all kind of garbled up and jumbled into the intertropical convergence zone. So it's going to take its time moving across the Atlantic again. There is the official highlight from the Hurricane Center, giving it the opportunity to develop east of the Caribbean. I personally think there's a higher opportunity once it gets to the Central Caribbean, but that's one of the three things that we are going to talk about. So here are the kind of scenarios that we are going to watch for over the next couple of days. Now, this is getting into late next week, so I want to emphasize there is a ton of time to watch this entity. So let's break it down. If the wave is strong moving into the Caribbean, it's going to have the best opportunity to follow that green line. It's going to feel that dip in the jet stream, that blue thing at the top where it says digging trough. It's going to feel that, and it's going to go up closer to Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, and then north. If it is still kind of unorganized and it takes its time to get organized, maybe say closer uh, south of Haiti, Jamaica area, then it has the most likely opportunity to reach its full strength potential, number one, but also number two, have the opportunity to lift and impact more people as well, following uh, one of those red arrows or somewhere in between. Again, there's still a lot to iron out in terms of what exactly is going to steer this thing, but we know there's going to be high pressure in the Gulf. We know that dip in the jet stream is going to be heading down towards the deep south and mid-Atlantic. Then there's scenario three. This thing never really gets its act together, and it just kind of drifts and gets trapped under that high pressure and then moves into Central America. So those are the three things to watch for. Again, if it is strong entering the Caribbean, it's going to hook up quick. If it's organizing closer to Haiti and Jamaica, I think that's the kind of worst case scenario for this tropical wave because, again, it's going to lift north and impact more people, and it has the potential to reach its full potential, which is a lot of untapped energy. I want to show you uh, the other weather computer now because this is going to break down some of the ensembles. So this is the GFS ensembles from this afternoon. And it clearly shows kind of what we just talked about. There are three distinct camps. There's the one that kind of takes it over here. Those are weaker for longer. Then we have the kind of organizational ones that, okay, maybe tries to find itself a little bit once it gets towards Jamaica, south of Haiti. And then there's the ones that come in strong or at least organized it has the opportunity to get strong and then lift towards Puerto Rico, maybe the Dominican Republic, and then back out into the Atlantic. So there are three distinct camps. Nobody knows what's going to happen with those at this point. Uh, we need more data to come in, and we're going to fine-tune that, of course, over the next couple of days. But there's a lot of uncertainty in this thing's uh, distant future. Here are the Google DeepMind ensembles from earlier into the afternoon. Clearly, there's the... Uh, Developing one to kind of lift north again as it moves towards the Eastern Caribbean. And then you have the further west ensembles towards Central America. And then with that bump to the north, the European ensembles, it shows two distinct because it does not have really anything going in this direction and going out. It does have development in between the Dominican Republic and Haiti. You do see some things starting to tug that way, but then the consensus on the European ensemble wants to kind of bury it into Central America. So there's a ton of things to iron out. That's what the steering current looks like. The rest of it would depend upon strength and then some of the nuances that we just don't know right now, but will come into will be will come in a little more clearer as we get closer and as we get hurricane hunters involved as the thing gets closer to the Caribbean. So stay tuned. Again, uh, we want to avoid door number two at all costs. I mean, once it gets into the Caribbean, it's not good for anybody. We just hope that it stays weak. Certainly heavy rain isn't the best for anybody either uh, for a prolonged period of time, but we want to keep it either one and three where it stays weak and then just limit the impact completely. New highlight just came out. This is why I always preach soapbox number one. 
don't name the storm before the Hurricane Center does because you're just going to confuse the people. That's for all of the channels out there that may be watching this because I've seen Melissa this, Melissa that. Well, this could be Melissa right here. This little swirly thing hanging off the coast of Nova Scotia, it is going to drift over the Gulf Stream, and it's going to meander its way into those warmer waters where it could acquire subtropical or tropical characteristics as it kind of stays out over these super warm waters of the Gulf Stream. So important to note that this could, this could take away the name Melissa. And then the one after that would be Nestor. So I'm not saying that it's going to get named, but there's your Gulf Stream right there. The super warm water is where it's kind of hanging out. It's going to have a chance uh, to become a named storm over the next couple of days. Never name it before the hurricane center does. You just confuse people. Severe risk for Saturday as we head back towards the lower 48. If you're still with me, post in the comments where you're tuning in from. If you made it this far, please consider subscribing. Would love to have you guys join the team. We're the only channel on YouTube that we have this team 100,000 strong where we have the weather conversation and not just throw some garbage out at you. So would love to have you on the team. I really appreciate your time and you being here as we move into the severe weather section of the video tonight. Slight risk for a severe weather level two out of five on Saturday. It may end up going up a little bit as we get closer to the event, um, maybe towards three out of five. But Shreveport to St. Louis, that's going to be the, the main zone here. You can even add Springfield to add to the alliteration here. But really going to be watching from about Dallas to the east side of Oklahoma City, up towards just south of Detroit, Jackson, Mississippi, down closer to New Orleans as that whole kind of avocado-looking shaded area uh, materializes on Saturday. Big cold front comes through, and this is kind of how it starts to shake out. This is going to be Saturday morning at 11 o'clock, likely some storms ongoing already, uh, parts of Missouri, eastern Oklahoma, and then we get to the main event, this second line. This is a nasty line of thunderstorms. That's 7 o'clock on Saturday evening, Eastern Time, 6 o'clock Central, uh, moving into Shreveport, Conway, Little Rock, Jonesboro, and then just south of St. Louis, that's the big, big line of thunderstorms. And then it just blows up even further. I want to show you this. High-resolution models are crazy these days. This is picking up on a bow echo, kind of rolling through Tupelo, and then maybe uh, if it holds together closer to Birmingham, Columbus, Mississippi as well. Uh, when you get those bows, you see that backward C shape right there, uh, closer to Hamilton. Behind that, right underneath where it has this little comma head looking thing, right there around Hamilton, the strong winds kind of force in behind it. So if something like that were to develop, not saying it's going to be in this exact area, but that's one of the severe weather modes that we would look for you get a big rush of strong winds behind it uh so i'd really be watching for that and this is early on sunday morning so don't be surprised if there are warnings early in the morning uh on sunday also want to stress too on these little like rotating heads as we call them again right there by hamilton and again i'm not picking on hamilton it this could be displaced to uh, 50 miles or 100 miles to the north or south, so I'm not saying it's going to guarantee happen, but over those kind of rotating heads, you can get quick spin-up tornadoes. They're not the long ones, but they can still be um, damaging. So just watching for that, and then you see it weakening and then blasting through Atlanta uh, as we move through the early, uh, the latter stages of the morning, early afternoon on Sunday. There is a severe weather risk for tomorrow as this starts. This includes Oklahoma City. Uh, towards the Iowa border into western Missouri into eastern Kansas. So we're going to be watching for that as that cold front slides down. Now, for the weather pattern on Friday, we still have this kind of bulge in the center part of the country that's keeping the temperatures very warm relative to normal. Uh, this dip in the jet stream is what's kind of setting the stage for the severe weather potential getting into Friday and then especially Saturday as that pushes a little bit uh, to the east on uh, Saturday into Sunday. Low temperatures on Friday as we kind of rapid fire through some of this. I know your time is valuable, and I, I want to get all the information out as quick as possible. Um, 62 in Minneapolis, so much, much warmer than where we've been. For an overnight low, these are lows on October 17th on Friday. 40 in Billings, uh, a little chilly in Cheyenne, but not as cold as where it was. And then there's that warmth kind of surging. San Antonio, Houston, back in the 80s and low 90s. Orlando, 82. Jacksonville, 78. Detroit, it's still feeling like fall, nice and crisp for us 
although that warmth is going to move east, mid-60s in Detroit, Roanoke. We are at 71 degrees, real nice uh, in southwest Virginia. Showing you the progression of that for tomorrow, that's 9 o'clock in the morning on Friday, and we're watching from Wichita back to Oklahoma City for some storms to um, try to erupt there as we get into Friday evening. But again, the main event looks like it's coming on Saturday. All righty, guys. If you're still with me, I appreciate it. Thank you guys a ton for being here. Thank you for the support. Welcome to all of the new subscribers. I really appreciate the time. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to point out the garbage that is out there on social media. Again, back to the tropics. It's certainly one to watch. Nobody knows where it's going. So if you see the wild model runs that put like cat five storms anywhere, uh, it's trash. Okay. Straight up trash. I'm not saying that a strong storm is not possible because it certainly is. It's just the location. We don't know where, and we might not know for another five to seven days as all the steering comes together. It's a pretty convoluted pattern out there. Plus, the storm's not even developed yet. Thanks a ton for tuning in, guys. I'll catch you soon. Have a great night. Have a great weekend.